Alright, welcome back. Okay, we continue from where we left off in the previous clip. Yeah. Okay, we were looking at the change in networking capital. Okay, and the total here, 1075 minus uh, 684, okay, you get 391. Yeah? This is positive. It means that the company has increased its working capital yeah? over the year. Okay, from 2017 to 2018, it means that the company has used up cash, yeah, $391 to increase the working capital. So this will be cash outflow, yeah, net capital spending of 130 and then 391 to increase working capital. There was an inflow, yeah, this is inflow, 628 is an inflow, but these two are outflows, yeah. Therefore, the cash flow from assets will be $628 from operations or operating cash flow minus NCS, net capital spending, $130 uh, was used to increase the company's fixed assets and then $391 were used to increase the company's working capital. Yeah? Therefore, cash flow from assets, okay, uh, if you take 628 minus 130 minus 391, cash flow from assets, yeah, would be 107, yeah, $107. Now we look at the other, yeah, part of the cash flow statement, which is the cash flow to capital providers, yeah. So it is made up of two components. One is cash flow to creditors, yeah. Let's look at the cash flow to creditors. It is made up of interest minus yeah, the change in long-term debt so you minus ending long-term debt then you plus beginning long-term debt interest is taken from the income statement which is 70 dollars here ending long-term debt is here 454 minus then beginning long-term debt 408 is actually taken from here for the year 2017 yeah, the amount of 408 Therefore, here, the company has paid $70 in terms of interest, yeah? But the company also issued new debt. Note that the ending long-term debt is higher than the beginning long-term debt, yeah? Therefore, the company raised some money from the creditors, okay? But it also paid interest, yeah, to the creditors, $70. And therefore, in net terms, yeah, $70 was collected, but... Yeah, this uh, difference yeah, was uh, collected from the creditors, the new debt was issued. Therefore, a net cash flow outflow yeah, to creditors was 24, yeah, 70 minus the difference between the two. Yeah. Therefore, this is uh, a cash flow to creditors of $24. All right. Then the cash flow to stockholders, the next uh, element okay, or component is made up of three elements here. Dividend minus yeah, um, uh, change in common stock. Yeah? Then plus uh, the beginning yeah, uh, common stock, yeah? ending common stock uh, minus the beginning common stock. Because you minus the change, therefore this becomes minus and this becomes plus. Yeah? So dividend is taken from here. Dividends, $123 was paid yeah, in terms of dividend for the year. Then ending common stock yeah, is taken from here. Okay, you just take the common stock portion. Okay, in this case, the common stock breakdown is given. Yeah, but then let's say if it's just the equity is given, the total equity is given here. Then you need to start with net income here. Yeah, you add net income minus total equity, ending yeah, equity. Uh, plus beginning equity yeah? but in this case the common stock breakdown is given 604, uh, 640 so it is negative 640 plus 600 here yeah? right taken from here the common stock and premium for 2017 it means that the company is uh, paid out dividends of 123 yeah, dollars but the company also issued new shares yeah? because the ending yeah uh, number of shares or uh, share value, yeah? Okay, stock and premium is 640. 
but the beginning was only 600 so it issued 40 dollars uh, in terms of shares yeah? 40 dollars worth of shares uh, since the dividend was paid okay but then you receive 40 dollars from your shareholder then the, the net amount that you pay out to shareholders or stockholders will be 83 and yeah? this minus the increase in uh, the issue of shares therefore 83 was uh, paid out yeah you can also use this yeah as i mentioned here the breakdown of the common stock and uh, common stock and premium and the retail earnings is given yeah these are two components given you can take the total here okay you can take the total here and the total here all right that will be the change in equity yeah so you can uh, take net income minus the change in equity you get the same answer as you can see here yeah you also get 83 yeah i've used the formula here total equity and total equity here and i have taken the net income yeah you get the same answer as you get here all right so this is 83 if you use this formula or you use this formula okay like you use uh, the two uh, equations yeah equation 16 and 14 yeah this is equation 14 this is equation 16 that we have seen in a previous slip all right this is cash flow to creditors 24 dollars and cash flow to stockholders will be 83 dollars yeah when you add these two total cash flow to capital providers will be 107 and this must be yeah, equal to cash flow from assets it cannot be any other way yeah so this uh, analysis tells you what yeah? it tells you that the company is generating uh, cash flow from operations okay which is uh, 628 dollars okay uh, it has spent uh, the cash yeah, some cash to increase fixed asset which is good okay that means the company is expanding but uh, a large amount yeah, you, is used to increase working capital yeah so this is a bit of a worry yeah the increase in working capital is more than the increase in uh, fixed asset yeah so this might be a worry okay so you need to investigate further yeah? but this is not necessarily bad okay because the cash flow from assets is still positive yeah after considering the fixed asset increase and also working capital increase it's still positive okay and how was this cash used yeah this hundred and seven dollars okay were used to pay creditors okay a small portion is used to pay creditors and a larger portion is used to pay the stockholders yeah? and that is the picture this that this uh, cash flow st statement provides yeah is that okay all right yeah with that we finish this uh, final portion yeah or final key point of this chapter let's go back to the slides okay so the answer yeah, that we have seen in the Excel file is actually shown here as well. Let me just drag it back to the middle so that you can see. Okay. Um, all right, here we are. All right, the cash flow from assets, we have shown that it is $107, right? And uh, here, they don't use the term cash flow to capital providers, yeah? But when you add the cash flow to creditors and the cash flow to stockholders, the amount here, which is 24 and 83, as we have shown in the Excel example, okay, it will be equal to the cash flow from assets, which is $107. Yeah? So that is the solution for that particular problem. Now, this is the summary. Okay, We have seen that summary. You can see it on your own time. Okay. Now this is another example yeah, of uh, preparing the uh, cash flow statement. Okay, uh, so you are given the balance sheet and income statement information. So this you can do on in your own time. Okay, I'm not going to show you the solution for this here. Okay, uh, I will show the solution in class. Yeah, but uh, I think we move, we can move on. The solution is given here. Okay, the example is given here. So the cash flow from assets you should get 506 and the cash flow to capital providers you must also get 506 yeah the cash flow identity holds yeah so we can call this the cash flow identity yeah the CFFA 
being equal to CFTCP, okay, if it is equal, then the cash uh, cash flow identity yeah, holds, yeah, because this cash flow identity is derived from the balance sheet identity. All right, yeah, with that, we finish this particular topic. Okay, let's do a quick review what we have covered in this chapter. Uh, we have looked at first the balance sheet, okay, the uh, first financial statement. Then the second financial statement is the income statement, yeah. So we have seen two statements. But in the balance sheet, yeah, we, we have seen that the balance sheet is normally given in book value terms, yeah. But we are interested more in the market value because the market value will be used uh, in decision making here yeah, particularly in finance okay and not the book value book value has little relevance yeah all right then the second part okay we looked at accounting uh, in uh, accounting income statement yeah and we looked at uh, the limitations of uh, accounting income in the third key concept we looked at the limitation of accounting income compared to cash flow Okay, they are different. Okay, there are two reasons why they are different. Yeah, because accounting recognizes uh, a revenue or expenditure based on uh, when the uh, income or revenue is uh, acquired or uh, expenses incurred. Yeah, but then from uh, the cash flow perspective or from finance perspective. We recognize yeah, an, uh, an expenditure or cash outflow when we pay yeah, okay, uh, the cash. And we recognize an income or cash inflow when we actually collect the cash. Yeah? Therefore, uh, that is one difference. The other is that the counting income also includes non-cash expenses like depreciation, yeah, which understates the accounting income. Okay, so uh, these are the two reasons that uh, uh, the accounting income is uh, uh, inadequate yeah, or not enough okay, for financial decision making. So we have to go to cash flow. Yeah? Now, uh, the third, uh, the fourth yeah, key point in the chapter is about uh, marginal and average tax rates. Yeah? We have seen how marginal tax rates and average tax rates are determined. Okay, average tax rate is computed, marginal tax rate is determined, yeah? Okay, so you need to know the difference between the two. We have seen an example on that. Then the last part, uh, we have looked at a measure of cash flow. How do we determine yeah, the cash flow of a firm? And here we have used the cash flow statement yeah, in order to come up with this uh, statement, yeah? We have looked at the equations, various equations, and we have looked at uh, how this is derived and we have also looked at an example yeah, uh, to solve this uh, given problem okay uh, so that is the uh, end of the chapter and the uh, and we have another yeah, comprehensive problem which is also another application of a problem with cash flow statement okay so we are asked to compute the uh, cash flow from assets Okay, we can, you can do it uh, in your own time. Just follow the method that we uh, I have shown you yeah, here, so you can derive the cash flow from assets. Yeah. So with that, we end this clip. This clip is shorter than the other clips. Yeah. But then we can't, we have come to the end of chapter two. Yeah. So in the next uh, clip, we will start with chapter three. All right. Uh, good night, everyone.